A fishy smell at your place. Not the one a nice salmon steak has. Doesn't mean you forgot to throw away the garbage with last night's dinner fish bones. Such a noxious odor means you may want to check the electrical equipment in your home. Frayed wires, faulty breakers, overheated electrical systems, and overloaded circuits may smell fishy. All those wires are coated with plastic that emits fish odor when it heats up significantly. If you smell rotten eggs in your house, Uh call the plumber straight away. The most obvious reason is the sewage and drain problems. But such a smell can also be produced if you've got problems with the water heater. Another possible culprit might be a gas leak. Manufacturers add some distinct bad-smelling chemical to natural gas so that people could notice even the tiniest leak on the spot. Some believe you can smell carbon monoxide thanks to these additives, but unfortunately, it doesn't work this way. This gas is a dangerous byproduct of burning, and it's not stored anywhere, unlike natural gas, so no scent can be added to it. Beware! As many other nasty things, mold does have a smell, Hmm. and a rather distinct one. It smells earthy and musty. It's not uncommon to find it wherever water is present and trapped, like an unknown leak in the walls. Mold spores can grow as a result of this moist patch and can cause pretty serious health issues. Another reason why your bathroom may smell kind of funky is the stagnant water or some residues in the drain. If you've already called the plumber, but they can only come the day after tomorrow, well, there's a cool hack on how to mask the smell. Add a couple of drops of any essential oil that you like on the toilet paper roll. Yeah, the problem is still here, but at least you don't choke on this stagnant stink. If you blame the toilet brush on the stink in your bathroom, squirt some scented detergent right into the holder. You can also create your own DIY scent. Mixing a glass of distilled water, a tablespoon of your favorite essential oil, and a tablespoon of rubbing alcohol. The latter is going to take care of those bacteria, and essential oil will hide the bad smells. Plus, it's not likely to cause any allergic reactions. Dishwasher is supposed to be resident clean, but in fact, the moldy smell in your kitchen can come from there. Warm and damp environment is perfect for mold spores. And if there's some food residue, it's just a real paradise for mold. To get rid of it, run a dry heat cycle with no dishes. Make sure you've flushed all the interiors, including the filters and panels. Sometimes the silverware baskets can get pretty moldy too. Remove them and soak them in some diluted antibacterial detergent for an hour or so. Rinse thoroughly before using. If you're allergic to mold, Get ready for all kinds of nasty symptoms like cough, sneezing, itch, you name it. Sometimes people live with these chronic problems and have no idea it's because mold is growing in places they can't see with their own eyes. If you do find mold in your home, say, in the bathroom where it's often wet, non-ammonia cleaner or dish soap can be used to remove it. Be sure to protect your skin with gloves and wear long sleeves and a respirator to keep yourself from breathing in the spores. If you have a particularly large area of mold, it's best to hire a professional to come take care of it in the safest way possible. Your towel may smell moldy too. Make sure you don't use the same towel more than three times in a row. It accumulates bacteria, plus a wet and dirty towel can be pretty smelly. A couple of extra pinches of baking soda once in a few washings will help get rid of all the bacteria. If your bedroom smells rotten, the problem may be about your mattress. Recent tests taken from 7-year-old mattresses showed there were over 15 million colony-forming units of bacteria per square inch. It's like the whole universe in your bed. There are all kinds of filth, yeast, mold, Uh even staphylococcus bacteria. Baking soda may help you out again. Sift some on the mattress and let it sit for half an hour. Then clean it with a vacuum. It's better if you got a brush attachment. Beware of weird sounds at your place, too. Clicking and knocking in winter or fall, of course, can be explained by turning on the heating for the first time during the cold season. Sometimes the problem is about the radiators and some condensed steam stuck in the system. It's all about the air that expands and contracts in the radiators because of temperature change. 
To fix it, you may want to try bleeding the radiators. Bubbling sound in your home may be of a different nature. Strangely, it may be the sound of a water leak. If you're not sure, shut off the water main again and listen attentively. In case the sound stops when the line's off and comes back as soon as it's on, call the plumber. If nothing changes, it may be the water heater. Sometimes the sediment stays at the tank bottom and bubbles every time the water gets heated, so draining the tank could be a great idea. If the AC filter is dirty, it may produce some quite weird blood-curdling sound. A dirty filter means the split system can't suck in the air freely, so it has to get it from around the filter. It may not be that obvious during the day, but it's going to drive you nuts at night. Well, just change the filter and have your sweetest dreams. If you're planning to move into a new house, check the walls before picking one. Surprisingly, walls covered with 20 layers of paint are a good reason to worry. Unlike old cracked walls, fresh paint is a telltale sign. Probably there's something to hide. Ask the landlord why they had to urgently cover those walls. Now, look at the ceiling. Once you know about the dangers of popcorn ceilings, you'll never want one hovering above your head again. That's because not only do popcorn ceilings collect dust and look, well, really ugly, they can contain a toxic substance called, cue the horror music, asbestos. Asbestos is made up of a whole alphabet soup of naturally occurring and hard-to-pronounce crystal fibers. What makes asbestos a desirable building material is its crazy strength and ability to withstand high temperatures. It can also be resistant to chemicals and even electricity. Some old homes may have more than one layer of roofing, and sometimes these could contain asbestos. Too many trees in the front yard pose a certain danger too. They may fall during a storm or even catch fire because of lightning. Remember that removing trees can be pricey. Plus, various shrubs can hide thousands of bugs you don't want to have in your house. Of course, when nasty little roaches and ants invade your home, you go for something really poisonous. Unfortunately, those pesticides you're dousing them in are bad for you too. To prevent this from happening, always clean up any bug spray you use in your home after it served its purpose. And be sure to store any pesticides away from food products or anything else that touches your skin. Underneath a sink or in a garage is usually a safe bet. Your carpeting may seem innocuous enough, but it's emitting some potentially dangerous chemicals known as volatile organic compounds VOCs, which come from the glues and dyes in the carpet. Remember that your new carpet might release various chemicals during the first days. You also should consider that carpet can trap pollutants, dust mites, pet dander, mold, dirt, and more that can adversely affect anyone with respiratory issues. To prevent potential hazards, keep the windows open for the first few days after the new carpet is installed so the VOCs can escape and vacuum your carpeted floors regularly to rid the fibers of potential pollutants. Wow, I think I'll move to a cave. Sounds safer. Hmm, is that a bear? Now, in the unfortunate situation where you may be in danger of having a run-in with one of the many dangerous animals, the last thing you want to worry about is not being able to see them. Let's take a look at some of these sneaky hunters who have mastered the art of camouflage. You know what an anagram of the word sneaky is? Try snaky. Yep, snakes definitely have the ability to bite you before you even know there's one nearby. And wow, do they like to bite us! There's an estimated 4.5 million people bitten by snakes each year. Unfortunately for humans, the snake with the highest venom yield, which is the amount of venom held in the venom glands at a time, is also an expert in discreetness. Allow me to introduce you to the Gaboon Viper. Nope, stay back. This species of snake can be found in the subtropical forests and savannas of Western Africa, including the Ivory Coast, Ghana, Guinea, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Togo. That's a lot of snakes. They typically grow to a length of about 4 to 6 feet and can weigh from 20 to 25 pounds. This makes it one of the largest and heaviest vipers. And I'm not just saying this for dramatic effect, but the species also has the largest fangs of any venomous snake. 
They often measure 2 inches long or more and fold up against the roof of the snake's mouth when not in use. Have I made the Gaboon Viper sound terrifying? If I'm yet to do so, now might be a good time to let you know that the creature has enlarged scales on its nose that look like a pair of horns, just to go along with its wide triangular head and vertical slit pupils. As an ambush animal, the creature likes to make the most of its brownish-gray mottled scales. The Bytus gabonica, its real scientific name and not a joke, is a nocturnal hunter and will lie perfectly still underneath leaves or plants on the forest floor and wait for its prey to pass by before striking. The snake is carnivorous. Its diet mostly includes rodents, birds, frogs, and lizards. Yum! Its hunting ability greatly benefits from this knack to blend in seamlessly with its surroundings. This even makes them capable of taking down larger animals, such as mongooses and hares. Needless to say that if you do manage to spot a gaboon viper while strolling around Western Africa, there are only two things you need to think about. The first thing, don't pet it. Actually, run away from it. Although slow-moving and sluggish, these snakes do have one of the fastest bite strikes around, and their head can move between 175 and 200 miles per hour during an attack. Oh, and the second thing is that maybe you should hire someone to walk ahead of you just in case. Thankfully, though, bites from the creatures are very rare, as the gaboon viper is much calmer than other dangerous snakes, such as the puff adder or black mamba. This doesn't mean you shouldn't be careful. When bites do occur, it often happens when a human foot accidentally steps on the creature, because, as we now know, they're not the easiest thing to see. For the unlucky ones who do get bitten, it's really serious. The Gaboon Viper's venom is extremely dangerous if not countered by an antidote within 2-4 to hours. Okay, so you might have guessed that a lot of snakes would use the art of camouflage to their advantage, given that they're low to the ground and not especially wide or tall. Why don't we look at a bigger creature that you may think you have no trouble spotting? Speaking of spots, how about a leopard? Leopards are found in many parts of the world across Africa, parts of the Middle East, and Asia, including China, India, and eastern Russia. On average, they can weigh anywhere between 110 and 200 pounds and be as long as 7 feet, excluding their 3-foot-long tail. Typically yellow in color on top and white on the bottom, leopards have dark spots arranged in what looks like rosettes all over their body. The different design patterns of these spots have confirmed the existence of several different races of leopards. Black leopards are perfectly equipped for stalking other animals during the night whilst lurking in the shadows, thanks to their all-black fur coat. But you might have thought the spotted coats of the other leopards would actually make them quite easy to notice. This isn't the case. In environments where there are lots of light and dark patches of different sizes and shapes, it helps to have a lot of spots, splotches, or stripes. Just think about the sun-dappled areas of the African outback and how the animal could use them to their advantage. As if they needed any more abilities to allow them to behave in an annoyingly stealthy manner, leopards are also agile tree climbers. In other words, they can also stalk you from above. So what animals get tricked by the leopard's camouflage skills? Well, anything it can overpower, from small rodents to water bugs. But leopards generally hunt smaller and medium-sized antelopes and deer. Thankfully, all of the big cat species that you may encounter during a safari in Africa, leopards are seen as the least likely to attack a human. Most instances of dangerous encounters between leopards and humans happen when the animal is weakened and unable to hunt so it has to take whatever it can get. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't keep your eyes open, really open, given their ability to hide if you're in an area known to house leopards. No point trying to run away from an animal that can reach a speed of up to 35 miles per hour. Interestingly, this is actually slower than the top speed of most of the animals it hunts, which again speaks to the leopard's ability to sneak around. There are a lot of reasons why the leopard's coat works to its advantage from a camouflage perspective. But you know where this might not be too effective? How about the Snow White Arctic? There, you might not notice a certain pair of eyes, nose, and foot pads coming towards you because the rest of the owner's body blends in with your surroundings. The owner in question is the polar bear. Yep, the polar bear can camouflage itself to its environment so well that it can actually pass as a snowdrift. What's super surprising about this is that the animal's coat isn't even white. 
The polar bear's fur is yellow, and its skin is actually black. Polar bears use their camouflage to their advantage, not only for hunting, but also for their own protection. This is weird to think about, given that polar bears are the largest bear species and land carnivores in the world. They can weigh up to 1,300 pounds and measure up to 5 feet tall on all fours or nearly 10 feet when standing up. Despite being hard to spot because of their fur, it's the art of patience that polar bears prefer to use when seeking out food. A common hunting method used by the bear is simply keeping perfectly still by a seal's breathing hole, and often not just for hours, but for days. Sometimes this patient goes without reward. And even when a seal comes up for a breath, its slippery body means that, on average, polar bears only catch one out of every five seals they come across. Well, there's nothing wrong with taking matters into your own hands, or in this case, paws. Polar bears are very capable swimmers and can also hunt in the water. They can reach a speed of 6 miles per hour by paddling with their front paws and holding their hind legs flat like a rudder. Their paws are slightly webbed to help them swim. They're typically able to hold their breath underwater for up to 30 seconds. Luckily, interactions between polar bears and humans are very rare. Between 1870 and 2014, there were only 73 documented dangerous meetings between the two species. As with leopards and gaboon vipers, we would have to go out of our way to find one. The problem is that there's a good chance they'll find us first if we do. Some creatures don't even use the art of camouflage. They're just so small that you can't see them. This is the case with a species of jellyfish known as the common kingslayer or mallow kingi. This creature typically grows up to an inch and a quarter in size. You can compare it to the size of a human thumbnail. Imagine being underneath the ocean and trying to spot something that small. The common king slayer has four tentacles surrounded by tissue that resembles a halo. You can find this jellyfish mostly in Australian waters. The creature actually got its name from an unfortunate encounter with an American tourist named Robert King who was visiting Australia, went swimming, and got slayed, I guess. Whilst you might think that jellyfish just float around aimlessly in the ocean all day, most of them are actually active hunters, and the kingslayer is no different. This creature even has eyes equipped with lenses, corneas, and retinas. They allow the jellyfish to see actual images, rather than just tell the difference between areas of light and dark. Despite being so small, the Kingslayer is extremely venomous, as the poor Mr. King found out. Upon contact, it shoots its venom into other animals' bloodstream via its dart-like stinging cells located inside the tentacles. Thankfully, the Kingslayer isn't seeking out interaction with people. However, an estimated 150 million people are stung by all kinds of jellyfish every year, so it's best to be on the lookout whenever you're underwater. Ah, a purple sunset. You must have seen one of those at least once in your life. Normally, it's nothing ominous and has to do with the way light travels. The light that the sun produces is white. When it goes through a prism, you see light waves of different colors, from red and orange to blue, green, and indigo. Light normally travels in a straight line if there's no obstacle in its way. The shorter light waves, including blues and purples, are scattered easier when they meet with those obstacles, like molecules and aerosols in the atmosphere. Because the sun is low on the horizon at sunset and sunrise, its light has to pass through more molecules that scatter the violet and blue light. The colors that your eyes pick up, then, are yellow, orange, and red. But with the right conditions, you can see the gorgeous purple sky. Sometimes, purple sky appears for much scarier reasons. It can be caused by hurricanes, wildfires, or dust storms. The concentration of vapor in the air increases, and the light scatters more than usual. Dust, a setting sun, and low cloud cover all contribute to this natural show, too. The sky turns orange and red at dusk if there's still enough light. Then, it gives off pink hues, which mix up with a dark blue sky above. Now, do you remember what happens when you mix pink and blue? You get the color purple. Not every hurricane makes the sky turn purple, and trying to predict if it's going to happen is like trying to forecast a rainbow. Still, people reported several major hurricanes made the skies turn purple. Now, green skies might look just as spectacular as purple ones, but they actually also scream danger. 
they're usually there to tell you a thunderstorm, hailstorm, or a tornado is somewhere nearby. The unique color is a result of yellow sun rays getting mixed with the blue light coming from storm clouds. So you're enjoying a nice day by the ocean with a fresh breeze in your hair, when suddenly you notice the water starts retreating from the beach at a huge speed. This is a sign for you to start running as fast and far away from the beach as you can. This most likely means that a tsunami is on the way. A quick reaction maximizes your chances of survival. Now, if you notice the sea level is rising, but it doesn't seem too extreme, it could be another sign of an approaching tsunami. It happens in 40% of cases, and the incoming water is the first tsunami wave. The next one, way larger and more dangerous, usually follows in about 10 minutes. Another thing about tsunamis is that they like to arrive with some loud sounds. People describe them as thunder, the sound of a locomotive, a helicopter, or just a loud boom. Do you see a channel of choppy water on the beach? It's in your best interest to stay away from the water. There might be a rip current under the surface that can be extremely dangerous. Sometimes waves hit the shore in a weird way, which forms these rip currents. You might see a strange break in the waves, or an area with a different color than the rest of the water. Random bits of seaweed going in all directions is another rip current warning sign. If you happen to find yourself caught in a rip current, try to stay afloat, but don't try to go against the current. You'll only waste precious energy. Scream for help and try to float your way along the beach. Once you break out of the current, swim diagonally to the shore. The next time you spot conically shaped clouds in the sky, remember it's a good time to start looking for some shelter. If it just stays like that, a severe storm is on the way. But if a cloud of that shape starts spinning around, it means it's about to transform into a tornado. If you have bees nearby, they can save you from big trouble one day. These hard-working little guys get more active than usual when they feel like a storm is on the way. They speed up to collect more nectar before it hits them, and once they're done with it, they'll always come back to the hive 10 to 15 minutes before heavy rain, even when there are no obvious signs of it coming. Their secret is super-sensitive hairs on the back that can pick up electrostatic buildups from storm clouds. For centuries, people have noticed that animals act weirdly a couple of days before big seismic events. Dogs can't start barking, cows halt their milk, and toads, rats, and snakes leave their homes. It looks like animals can feel smaller initial shock waves that humans don't even notice. Scientists have tried to find some legit explanation for it and run endless tests and experiments. But so far, they're still on their way to explaining this mystery. Can you smell ozone in the air? When a thunderstorm is on the way, it's the most distinct and pungent smell you can pick up. An electrical charge of lightning sets it free from higher altitudes. The other, more pleasant smell of rain is petrichor. Rainwater wakes up molecules on plants, trees, concrete, and asphalt. Their aroma spreads all over the place. You can even feel that smell in your own mouth. All those positive ions in the air that a lightning bolt sets free gets mixed with ozone and your saliva, and that's how you get that bitter metallic taste. When lightning is about to strike, you might hear bizarre crackling, buzzing, or vibrating sounds coming from metal objects nearby. Your palms may begin to sweat, and then you can feel your hair stand on end. That's a clear call for action, and that action is to run for your life. Positive charges are going through your body, trying to reach toward the negatively charged part of the storm. Trust me, you don't want these charges to meet. If you see no shelter that you can reach fast, try to make yourself smaller than the objects around you. Drop down your umbrella and stay away from wire fences, metal pipes, rails, and other metallic objects. And don't lie flat on the ground, it's likely wet, which means it's a great conductor of electricity. If you suddenly notice crevices in the asphalt next to your house, it could be a sinkhole warning sign. Inspect your house on the inside. Does that door begin to jam? Or maybe there's a gap where the walls meet the ceiling. Uneven kitchen cabinets and drawers, slanted floors, stairs that begin to slope, 
water leaking after every rain and displaced moldings are all signs that a sinkhole is about to open. To find out if it's definitely a sinkhole and how dangerous it is, you gotta consult with an engineering company. If you find a sinkhole that's already there, you gotta stay away from the sinkhole area. Fence or rope it off to make it less dangerous for others. You'll need professional help to fix it. Some volcanoes scream when they're about to erupt. Small earthquakes, which often happen before, produce a hum. It's mostly non-audible to human ears, but sometimes it reaches a frequency that lets you hear it as a strange rumbling or hissing sound coming from the ground. This noise is known as a harmonic tremor. With some volcanoes, it's the sound of magma bubbles vibrating when they're going through crevices in the crust of the Earth. But it's not always like this. If scientists manage to understand what exactly causes these volcanic screams, they could create a limited early warning system for volcanic eruptions. If you're out in the wild, pay attention to the water in creeks, streams, and rivers. If its level is quickly falling, even if it's raining, this might be a sign of a nearing landslide. And if you hear a faint rumbling noise or unusual sounds, like boulders knocking together, it could mean debris is on its way to you. It's a sign to head to safety immediately, like right now. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.